a silent sea. Waves whisper across the black water, and somewhere beneath the surface, a small metal shape moves. No crew, no captain, only code. This is how machines began to fight. This is how the future of war was born. Before Ukraine, before the Black Sea battles, there were men in desert rooms, watching gray screens. The first unmanned planes, predator drones, controlled by human hands, thousands of miles away. They changed everything. No pilot, no fear, just distance and data. But while the sky learned to fight without people, the oceans waited. In 2022, when Russian missiles destroyed Ukraine's ports, its navy was almost gone. No warships, no submarines, no hope at sea. And yet, fragments and garages a new weapon took shape. Small, fast, built by volunteers and engineers, by gamers, by coders, by dreamers. They called it Sea Baby. A boat no longer than a car, but with the reach of a torpedo. It carried cameras, explosives, satellite links. The first mission, a night in July, a single drone racing toward the Crimea bridge, a flash, a roar, a bridge broken, and the world realized the sea now belonged to machines. From that night forward, the designs evolved. Sea Baby grew larger, smarter, stronger. The names whispered like myths. Some carried rocket launchers. Some carried Sidewinder missiles. Air weapons reborn for water. They could travel 1,500 kilometers, guided by GPS, by Starlink, by human voice or sometimes by silence. Each drone, each unmanned ship, was part of a growing swarm, connected by code, trained by data, and sometimes by artificial intelligence. The Ukrainians built control vans, mobile centers, screens glowing in the dark. A new kind of warfare, half digital, half human, and when communication was lost, the drones did not stop. They followed their final instructions, alone. Soon, AI began to choose which target to follow, which signal to trust. The system could tell friend from foe based on movement, based on signature, based on learning. It was faster than any soldier, and colder than any human decision. For the first time, machines were making moral choices on a battlefield. Some called it progress. Others called it a warning. Russian ships began to fall, one after another. Sevastopol, once the fortress of the Black Sea, was no longer safe. Entire fleets moved east, hiding from a handful of small boats, costing less than a single missile. The balance of power had shifted, not through size, but through imagination. A nation without ships now ruled the water. The last time war changed this fast was a century ago when tanks replaced horses 
when planes replaced soldiers on the hill. Now, machines replace people entirely. From predator drones in the sky to sea baby in the waves, the pattern repeats. Technology does not just serve war, it becomes war. NATO watched, the United States watched. So did China and Turkey and Britain. Militaries began to design their own swarms, their own fleets without crews. The race for autonomy had started. The Blue Revolution, they called it. Whoever controls unmanned oceans controls the trade routes, the cables, the future. But somewhere in the noise of victory, a question remains. If a machine kills without a man's command, who is guilty? Who is responsible? Can war still be human when humans are no longer required? Every generation builds new weapons, but never asks what kind of world they leave behind. In Kiev, young engineers still code through the night. Their screens light small rooms. Their families sleep upstairs. The war outside never stops. They say, we build these machines because we must, because if we don't, we die. They are not wrong, but every line of code they write also writes the next chapter of humanity. The sea is quiet again, for now. But deep beneath, the hum of electric motors continues. Somewhere, a new generation of drones is waiting. And one day, they will rise again. This is not just the story of Ukraine. This is the story of us all. How we built machines to fight our wars, and how, in doing so, we may have taught them to fight without us.